In this video, I walk you through rebuilding Brian Eno's Music for Airports and building your own generative ambient sound machine. Welcome uh, back again in the Open Framework Super Basic series. We're playing around with audio. Uh, previously, we've looked at how to play samples and the controls that we've got over samples about timing, pan, speed, and made a grungy, dirty electronic um, sound sampler. This time, I'm going to investigate a piece of music that's quite old from the ambient genre by the musical pioneer and artist Brian Eno taking apart a piece of music that he built called Music for Airports and playing with ideas of generative music and timing and playing multiple samples so that you can swap in your own and make your own ambient music. I'm going to explore Brian Eno's Music for Airports, which is a piece of ambient music where Brian Eno built a system inside the studio that would generate music that he liked and then recorded it to one specific version on vinyl. And uh, interestingly, in this discussion around working with generative systems, there is a a, a split in some ways that you could think of between the artist producing a system that continues to generate use music or painting or drawing or sculpture or dance or whatever it may be and the process and the instance of every version being different is one of the interesting and important parts. And the other side is artists producing generative systems to a system in the creative process and producing one output maybe vari variations, but there's a fixed version. And this is coming from a fixed version that Brian Eno recorded in the studio and then mastered. Dan Carr on the ReverbMachine.com blog, link down below, uh, did a really interesting deconstruction of what's going on musically inside Music for Airports, um, the chords, the musical structure, and so on. Uh, and I'm not going to go into it in great detail. I'm going to use his samples that he's made available for download, and the link to download is below. So, Dan Carr, thank you very much. They're beautiful samples and a fantastic article. In the article, he discusses the origins of music for airports and talks about the technique where Brian Eno would put these uh, two tape machines together and produced um, this loop where he's got a synthesizer, and he's using an EMS um, uh, Synthia AKS, um, and he's running through an EQ and an echo unit and then through this series of tape loops, which is very similar to Frippertronics from Robert Fripp, if you are interested in finding out about experimental musicians. And he produced music for airports. And there are three or four notes of phrases that loop and repeat and come in and out of phase because the loops that he's using are different lengths. So Dan Carr goes through and talks about this idea that uh, Eno had come up with where there are these different loops of piano notes and then also vocal pieces. So he's reproduced them. And it's this palette of complementary sounds that produces our music. And they have particular lengths. And you can go and download the loops, and that's exactly what I've done. And I wanted to produce an example. So I've got a new Open Frameworks project that I've built with the project generator. And in the bin file, inside our data file, which is the first place that Open Frameworks will look when it's looking for music, I've got Dan Carr's original samples that I downloaded. And they're all as WAV files, eight piano samples, and seven choir samples, and they sound a bit like this. And Dan has produced the samples, so the samples are the same length as the loops that Eno was using, so each sample is a different length with a lot of silence. Um, and the choir samples sound like this. So depending upon where they would appear phase-wise, there's silence in this overall sample with a small piece. I took those and I cut out the silence. So 
So I have a bank of the original samples and I have these ones with the silence cut out. And I made a project in Xcode and I'm just using the OF sound player to load in samples and play them. And because I can make an object for loading a sample into, I can make multiple objects. So I've made two banks of them. And in my project file, I'm just going to walk through what I've got here. So I've taken out most of the loops that I don't want, uh, the routine, so I've just got to set up, update, and draw, and key pressed. But I've written two new functions. One is to load the vocal samples, and one is to load the piano samples. So to define a new function, I've, I've decided, you know, does it tell me anything about what's going on? No, so it's void. It's called vocal sample, uh, load vocal or load piano, and I don't pass it any parameters. And then what I've done is I've made a vector of sound player objects called voices. So this is a list that I can put these sample objects into, my sound player objects. And then I just used OF sound player to say, make me seven sound player objects. I've got a Boolean, which is on or off, saying, are we playing automatically or not? So it's Boolean auto play. And then I made two floating point numbers to keep my tempo. And because I'm doing some timing, I'm going to use a current time. So I grab the current time, decide how long I want to wait, and I just keep checking. Is the time now equivalent to when I save the current time plus my delay? So it's a way of doing timing. And then I've just got an integer of how many voices. And the only reason I've done this largely is because there's uh, eight piano samples and seven vocal samples. So I have to remember which one am I loading. Am I going to load all the vocal samples or all the piano samples? So I've got my setup. I've got a routine to load the vocals, load the piano. I've got this list, this vector that I'm going to put uh, sound player objects into. And I've got a couple of variables to keep track of my tempo and what the time is. And in my CPP file, the setup is pretty straightforward. Because I've made these two routines. One is called load piano and the other is called load vocal. I can decide when this starts up, which one do I want to load first? The two loops are very similar, and I could do this a tidier, more efficient way. But basically, I'm just saying, like we did last time, please have a look at this space and load this sample called so-and-so inside this sound player object. So one loads all the piano, one loads all the vocal, and I set an initial timing of 5,000. So this will be 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. And I say, autoplay is going to be false. And my time is, we've seen this before, OF system time, get the milliseconds. So I just say, take this variable, initialize it with whatever the time is now. So we go and have a look at load piano. I'll just scroll down a little bit. And all of this source code is available online if you want to see it. The link is down below. This is my new routine that I've written. So I declared how it works in the header file, and this is how it does what it's supposed to do. It's part of OF app, and it's called Low Piano. I'm just saying there are eight voices I'm loading. Clear this voices vector. So this list of, of sound samples that I declared in the header file, just empty it, clear it. And then I just make this loop with uh, i is naught up to the number of total voices, so it'll loop eight times. I make a new sound player object here. And then I say, make a string called path and put in it piano dash cut, you know, piano zero, and then whatever the number is on the end that I want as I'm going through this loop of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what it will do is it'll go and look for Eno Piano Sample 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 4, and then I just concatenate wave on the end. So it'll load these in manually by constructing this file path. And I just say voice, so it's this new sound player object that I've just built. Load whatever's in the path. So it's this string that I made by concatenating this text and whatever number I'm on as I loop through. And then I set multiplay to be true. So I can say multiple versions of this. As we saw last time, if I tell a sound to play 
and then tell it to play again. If it hasn't finished, it'll start at the beginning. But with multiplay, when you set it to be true, you could tell it to play and it'll play another version. So you can have multiple copies of the sound sample playing at the same time, which is kind of cool. And then I take my uh, voices vector, this list of sound objects, use pushback and just insert the new sound sample into the end of this list. So we've got all our samples loaded into sound objects in this list, which is called voices. And if I'd said load the vocal sample, it's basically identical as a loop, but instead of saying load a piano sample name, I'm just grubby programming, hardwiring in a different path name. Um, and because there's helpfully seven voice samples and eight piano samples, I just have a difference. So I could make a much more optimal version of this, but this is a little clearer. So it loads the samples with this little loop. And so I have a vector full of all these sound samples. The first thing that I ask in my draw loop is, is autoplay true? So if something means it's implicitly asking, is this true? If it's true, then do this thing. So I say, if the autoplay is true and if the current time that we've got, the, the get system milliseconds, is after the current time and the tempo. So we, when we start, we grab the time. What time is it now? It's like five past one. And then say, how long do we want to wait? Two minutes. And we keep checking. Is the current milliseconds equivalent to what I said just now, plus the tempo? In which case, I use OF random and it tells me the total number of voices, which is the amount of samples I've got loaded. So you could make your own out of 50 samples if you wanted, three samples. It makes a random number and I just say, go to the voices vector and play whatever number is, send that OF sound player object a play. And then just refresh our variable current time with the system milliseconds. So we use current time, the variable, to keep count have we passed when we are, and every X milliseconds that's in tempo, we just pick a new random sample and fire it off. I'm just going to play that now, and you get an idea of what's going on. Then I'm going to show you one or two of the things that I've done that's completely unnecessary, but gives us a visual display. So this is fired up, it's compiled, and if I press the A key, I've programmed these things in, it'll autoplay and it's loaded piano samples. So it plays me my first piano sample. And I've set the tempo to be 5,000 uh, 5, milliseconds. So every five seconds, it'll choose a new random sample. is kind of nice, kind of beautiful. What I've done in my key presses, I've also added these switch statements to say, if I press the one key, play whatever's in the voice list zero. And then two is one and play all these voices so I can play them manually just by saying, go to sample X in this place, in this case, sample four, in my vector of sound player objects that have got sounds loaded in and just tell it to play. So if I run this again, I've got these simple things just issuing, check the keyboard, play the sample. So like we saw in the last video where I was playing with drum sounds, I could manipulate the speed, but I can also fire them off multiple. So I can build my own sample MPC type sample pad, or even have them triggered from things like the time of the day, movement from a sensor, light sensors, all kinds of stuff.
that's all cool. What I've also added is if I press the A key, it uses this not symbol to say, get the Boolean variable autoplay and make it equal to the opposite. So make it not equal, which means that if it's true, it'll become false. If it's false, it'll become true. So it's just a toggle to switch the autoplay on and off. And then I made case, if I press the V key, I call this routine that I made, load a vocal sample or load the piano sample. Just like we saw before, I could use the up and down keys to check and see what a tempo was. And we were doing this with timing and the speed of playing back the samples. Here, this is how long I want to wait. And the tempo, I can add or subtract these 500 millisecond chunks. So I can increase or decrease it by half a second. And because I've said this if statement here, the slowest I can make it go, because if the tempo goes negative, it'll never play. Um, the slowest it can go is a thousand minus this 500. So the slowest, uh, sorry, the fastest it'll go is 500 milliseconds. So it'll fire a sample every half a second. And then I have the V runs a load vocal routine and the P runs a load piano routine. So what I get is this completely controllable thing that'll play any sample I like. And I could add in additional things for individual volumes and playback speed, but I can play it like a piano. By using these trigger keys to play individual samples. And I can hit A for autoplay. And if I use the up and down, the plus and minus, I can, I can increase, or if I want, decrease the tempo. And now the tempo is 10,000 milliseconds, or it'll fire a sample every 10 seconds. And I get a much different feel, but it's still randomly going through. And if I hit the V key, it'll load me the vo vocal samples. So that's now run the V routine. And plays these beautiful vocal samples at my 10 second tempo. Or if I reduce the tempo, it'll start playing them much faster. If I hit the A, it'll auto play off and I can go and play the samples manually. The last thing that I want to show you in this video is just what I've done with this display because it's super simple, but it gives me this feedback. If it was a visual thing of manipulating 3D objects, it's really easy to understand what's going on, but with sound, unless you're an incredibly talented studio engineer or musician, it's difficult to to visualize it sometimes. So you can see I've got this rack of the voice names, which I'm just using print bitmap string. And then when a sample plays, the name of that sample, when a sample plays, the name of that sample gets highlighted to show that it's playing. And then you get the progress bar. And I'm using my friend, the map statement. So I'll have a quick look at that. And then we'll be done. So in the draw routine, we have this one bit, and this is really all that's going on, is if the auto plays on, check, should we check against the tempo, should we be playing a sample? And everything else here is just to make it look pretty. The display goes through, showing me the samples that I've got. And I make a loop here between line 44 and 51 that just loops through X number of times, the total number of voices. So this will loop through seven or eight times. And it says, if the voice or the sample 
at position i in my list of samples is playing, because that's a value, I can say, you know, oh, if sound player object, are you playing? And it'll say yes or no. So I'm saying if it's playing, draw a rectangle starting at 90 across, and then I use i to say, give me a multiple of 20. So if it's sample number four, it'll be four times 20, and it'll draw at this y position down the screen, plus this little offset to make it line up with the text. And then I use OF map again. So I can fire at a value and say it'll be between this and this and give me a value back between that and that. So I go to the sample we're interested in, which is a position I in my list of samples. And I say, get the position of that. How far through that sample are we playing? If it's the beginning, it'll be naught. If it's the end, it'll be 1.0. If it's halfway through, it'll be 0.5. So it'll return me the position. And I tell the map that it's expecting a value between naught and one. And I want it to translate that or map that to a value to give me something from 20 to the width of the screen minus an offset that I've set uh, to allow for text and stuff like that of 110. So it, it gets a position of wherever the sample is and draws me a rectangle starting from one side and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the sample plays through because we're asking the sample, what position are you? And that draws me a white progress bar that just gets bigger by pulling where the sound is. And then I just say, okay, great. Underneath that or next to that, use OF draw bitmap string highlight, which is why when they're playing, I'll get the white text on the black background saying voice and um, whatever voice is playing at a particular position, depending upon whether it's voice one, two, three, four, five. And if it's not playing, i.e. this voices blah, blah, blah is playing isn't true. The else statement does this other thing. It just says, oh, after all bitmap string. So instead of using draw highlight, it just draws a bitmap string in exactly the same position using the word voice and then adding on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how it draws them. And then just to help out at the bottom, I'm using OF draw bitmap string and giving this help text. Now I'm saying, okay, autoplay is on or off one or zero. So I get the Boolean autoplay, but because that's returning me a Boolean object, the computer doesn't know how to print a Boolean object. So I've got to turn it into a string, which it does know how to print. So I use OF to string and it'll print me a one or a zero from that. And then I do exactly the same. The tempo is OF to string of the tempo variable and then just concatenate milliseconds on the end. And then, then this little bit of text saying, press this stuff. That is music for homemade airports. So if you're interested, you can get the code uh, from the link down below. Do go and have a look at the excellent example at ReverbMachine.com from Dan Carr. And if you're interested in samples, you can get them there. Or you can swap in your own samples. You could even change how they loop. So you could put in drum sounds and start building a generative uh, drum machine based upon tempos or being able to play them randomly. So if you make something different, please do put some comments in and let me know what you're making. If you like the video, hit the subscribe. If you've got any questions, um, code issues, suggestions, let me know. And I look forward to seeing you on another video in the Open Frameworks Super Basics series. Mm -hmm.